Please confirm. Can you see my slide? Yes, we can. Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. so thank you very much. So, good afternoon, all. So, today is Saturday, 11th of July 2020, and we have one interesting topic we'll be looking at today, and that is performance optimization. I have lots of people that have been using Power BI to design wonderful reports, amazing reports out there. But one of the major challenges they do have is issue with performance. It's taking time for my dashboard to load. Let us see how we can optimize and get good results from that wonderful visuals we have done. So, once again, I'm your host, Ayodeji, for learning. And with me today, I have another MVP in the house. That is most valuable professional, Hamed Ojelowo. Hamed Ojelowo has been into Power BI, has been into Excel for a, for a, for a very good period of time. And he's a wonderful speaker, he's a great teacher. So he'll be taking us through this wonderful topic that is performance optimization. So, and let me just give an insight into next week. Next week, again, get ready for another wonderful section with a wonderful trainer also, Paul Barnabas will be coming up next week. So, Ahmed, how are you today? I'm good, fine, thanks. Okay, so great. Ahmed, just give us a introduction i've do i've given an insight into who i made this but let's know more about okay you. all right so i guess i should just uh, share my slide then so that i okay, can pull please up do. my, my do go ahead and page. share your slide okay so let's and as you are doing that this performance optimization we are talking about how in average how was the impact in reporting, business reporting? Okay, so um, I'm coming. Let me just pull up my slide first. Okay. So that we can just roll together with it as. Okay, all right. So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another session of our Power BI series. So my name is Ahmed Oilo. And uh, like Mr. Deji mentioned, we are both uh, colleagues and uh, professional colleagues. Basically, we are both Microsoft Certified Trainers, MVPs, and a couple of certifications here and there. So you can connect with me on Twitter with at African Analyst on LinkedIn, Ahmed Oyelowo. And then you can also check uh, my YouTube channel, Foresight BI, for uh, various videos on how to do so many things with Power BI. So make sure you subscribe to that channel as well. So our topic today is going to be on performance optimization, and this is a very serious uh, issue when it comes to development of Power BI. And that's simply because it is not just okay for us to do reporting. It is not okay for us to write DAX formulas, create data models, if at the end of the day, it's not going to be efficient. So the main objective for today is first, we are going to be looking at an overview of performance optimization in Power BI, which is what we are currently doing now. Then how do you measure your performance with something called performance analyzer in Power BI? Then we'll also be looking at a couple of ways that we can optimize our Power BI data models, how to optimize our tax formulas, and how to optimize reporting as well in terms of visualization. So these are the main objectives for today. And uh, to answer Mr. DJ's question, the impact of this is when you don't have efficient Power BI reports, what you end up getting is report that's is always very slow. So when I say slow, what I mean is this. So let's say, for example, you have a report page that has a couple of slicers. So you want to change from January, you want to pick February. So what is expected is immediately you click on February, you are supposed to see all your visuals updates immediately. But sometimes you tend to develop some kind of reports that after changing a slicer, after changing selection in the slicer, you see that everything is just going to be rolling for a while. So once you have that kind of report, 
then you know that there are issues and the issues are basically being on performance and you need to do something about it, which is what we are going to be talking about today. So once you are able to fix all those performance issues, the main objective of a report is to make it easier for your users, either yourself or maybe people in your organization or external users, wherever it may be, to be able to enjoy interacting with your reports in such a way that everything is going to happen very, very fast. Okay, And this is going to take us to the next thing, which is basically how do you optimize performance? So I'm going to share my screen, my Power BI screen, and we are going to look at how to optimize, how to read your, your Power BI performance using the performance analyzer in Power BI. So I'm going to stop this here and pull up another one. So by the way, I hope everybody is still following and no issues, you can hear me clearly. Can I get some confirmations? Yes, we yes, are with sir. you. All right. Yes, we are with you. I can hear you. Okay, awesome. Uh, share. Power BI. Okay, so can you see my Power BI screen now? Everybody confirm? Yes, sir. All right. So yes. basically, your first step in measuring performance of your Power BI report is right here inside of Power BI. So you need to go to your view tab in Power BI. Then you need to enable this thing here called performance analyzer. So once I enable this performance analyzer, I have a new panel here that I can click to start recording so that I can record how long it takes for different activities to happen in my report. So I'll just close this for a second and I'll create uh, one very simple measure now. So let me just go to modeling and click on new measure. So I want to create a simple measure for revenue which is just the sum of my order stable sales. Well, I think it really is the cap. Okay, everybody should be on mute, it's please. No caps. Hmm? Now, if, 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 if this is the particular one you want, you just press tap. Someone is talking. Can you please have your mic on mute? Okay. So I have my simple measure for revenue now, and I'm going to put that in a simple metrics table. I don't know why I like to use metrics table because it's more flexible than the ordinary table. So I'm going to report this revenue by, let's say, customer segment. Okay, so let me increase this size a little bit. Size, that's great. Taking this to 25. All right, so if I have this report now, for example, this is just a single visual, and I would like to measure the performance of this page, this report page, basically, and this visual, whatever visual I have on this page, I want to measure the performance. So what I typically need to do is first, I need to go to a separate page. So I'm going to make sure I go to a new blank page now. Then I will come to my view tab and I'll enable my performance analyzer and I'll now click on start recording. So once I click on start recording, by the way, I'm not the one you are seeing on your screen. I'm not white. So once I click on start recording now and I go back to that my page, my report page, you will see that something is going to happen. So I go back to page one and activities are being recorded i think i'm done then i will now click on stop so because i have just one visual here if i had 10 visuals on this report page then you are going to see that i'm going to have 10 different reports on this page i mean on this panel here and then you are going to see how long it takes in milliseconds for that visual to render okay so if i drill down on this you can see it's showing metrics if i drill down on this metrics here 
you will see that it is measuring different things. It's measuring how long the DAX query is being computed from my, my data. How long does it take the visual to actually display all those results? And what you see here as other is basically every other uh, every other uh, operation that is running within this Power BI at the moment is what you see as other. So this is how you can measure performance. But for you to get the accurate results with this, really, because when you uh, create a Power BI report, for example, in order for Power BI to optimize things and to optimize how everything works, it's going to start to cache different things like to cache your visual so that you can render your reports faster. So if you want to uh, measure the true performance of your report, all you always have to do is make sure that after, uh, just before you do your recording, you have to create this your blank page first. So this, let me clear this one first. So you create your blank page and then you now save that report. So you have to save your report making sure that you are standing on the blank page. Okay, so I'm going to control S and the report is saved and I'll close it and I'll open it back and I'll run another performance analyzer. So this time around, you may see that the timing is going to be a lot uh, more than the one you saw before because this time around, there is no caching of visuals. There is no caching of anything within this Power BI report. So I'm going to close this and uh, I'll try to open it back again. Opening up, okay. So apart from using uh, Power okay, BI your screen, your screen is not shared. Yeah, yeah, so I'll share it once it's up. So I'm just opening the Power BI file again. Share. Okay, so the screen is up now, right? So can you see the screen now? Great, yes. Okay, so now once I've opened the report now, you see that it's opening on the last page I was standing when I saved and closed, which is this blank page. So this is a true way to measure your performance. So now I'll go to my view tab again, and I'll select my performance analyzer. I'll click on start recording. And when I go back to my page one now, this is the true performance and you see that the time is going to be much more than the one we had before right because there is no caching in place now no uh previous storage of the views that we had on this Power bi report page so the reporting is still going to measure the same thing it measures the tax query it measures the visual display and it measures the other processing that is running within power bi so typically that is how you use performance analyzer to measure your performance. So in terms of how you now uh, determine what is high and what is low. So all you always want to do is, let's say you have plenty of visuals on this page, for example, when you are done, then you want to probably uh, sort this. Maybe you want to sort it descending so that you can see the things that have the highest numbers at the top. And then you want to start querying uh, the things that you may use to uh, optimize your reports, which is what we are going to start talking about from now. So I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint slide. So just let me know if I need to repeat myself on anything. Okay. All right, so when it comes to optimizing your reports, the very first thing you want to ensure that you are able to do is to have an efficient Power BI data model. So at the end of the day, the bulk of your report optimization is based on how your data model looks like. If your data model is not fine, if it's very rugged, then you are going to have a rugged report. And the first rule is if you don't need a column or a field in your data, then you shouldn't bring it in at all. So if you are connecting to a database, for example, relational database, so you can always use SQL queries to just import 
only those fields that you need from your database. But a lot of times, especially in this part of the world, we always uh, connect to flat files. So I'm going to show you a method that you can use, for example, to bring in only the columns you need from an, from an Excel file. You know, if you, your source is Excel, for example, you can write SQL queries to say select social column and social column and leave the rest in the database. You can do that. OK, so first thing is you have to bring in only the fields that you need in your data. Then you need to basically disable auto data and time intelligence in Power BI and you need to reduce cardinality. So I'm going to take you through what each one of these things are. I will go back and share my Power BI view. So the first thing is bring in only relevant data fields, which is clear enough, but I just want to quickly show you how you can do something like that if you are connecting to a flash file in Excel. Okay, so this is a blank Power BI file. I'm going to click on Get Data. I'll go to Excel and let's say I want to bring in the Superstore, Superstore data. If you know me very well, then you know this data set very well. I dream about it every time. Okay, so I want to connect to this orders worksheet from that data and I will click on Transform Data. So transformator is going to take me to Power Query. So typically, because Power Query just, you know, records all the steps for everything that you have done, sometimes it even goes as far as adding additional steps for you based on what it thinks is the right thing to do or what it thinks is the smart thing to do. But you should always have the power to control what Power BI is doing as well. So I will quickly analyze what this has done for us. So the first thing is we looked at where is our data sitting. It's sitting on one Excel workbook that was a source. And then we selected the worksheet that we wanted from that workbook, which is the navigation. So that worksheet basically contains 21 columns, as you can see here, 21 columns at the bottom. And then it promoted the headers and it changed type. So if I don't want to bring in all- Sorry, yeah. Ahmed, sorry for cutting in. Okay. You are still sharing Power BI, not Power Query. Why not share oh, screen really? one so that we can see the way you move all around? Okay, then. Okay, okay. Share your screen one. Uh, okay. So can you see my Power Query now? Great. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so I was explaining what has happened, what all of these steps basically mean. So the first step, our source, is to see where is our data sitting. Our data is sitting somewhere on one Excel workbook. And then the second step is navigation. So from that workbook, a workbook can have many sheets, it can have many tables, it can have many defined names and a lot of things. So navigation basically is from that workbook, what are we connecting to? So we connected to this orders worksheet and then Power Query in its own smartness helped us to carry this first row and it helped us to push it to the headings and then it changed the type. So, but the bottom line here is the fact that let's assume that we really don't want all the columns on this, uh, this file. We don't want all the columns in this other sheet. We have an option. So after all of these four steps, we have an option to basically say, maybe go to home and then click on choose columns and on select the columns we don't need. We can do that. We can also do that if we import our data from a relational database as well. But it's always better if you can, you know, just bring in what you need exactly without having to come back to Power Query and be saying removing some columns. So why do I need to bring in everything and remove some things? when I can just bring in what I need alone, okay? So with SQL, you can easily write your select statement and bring in what you want, but with Excel, there's no way you can write a select statement, okay? So what we'll do instead is, uh, we'll come back to this step that has navigation. So this is the navigation step that took us to this worksheet and brought all the 21 columns. You can see the number of columns at this bottom left. So what I'll do is I'll delete the last two steps, promoted headers, delete, I'll delete change type and I'll stay on this navigation. So I'm going to come to my view tab at the top here to enable my formula bar so I can see what is really happening. 
So for navigation step, what you see is this M code that has been written is basically saying that, you know what, can you pick uh, from this our source file here, go to one column called item, which we can not see. At the moment, if I come back to source, you see source has name, data, and item, okay? So navigation step is saying, go to the source, source step at the top, and then go to the item column of that source and pick the others, okay? So this is it, source, item, pick others, okay? And then it's also saying that the kind is equal to sheet. So once we get all these things now, select the data column. So the data basically is sitting inside this column and the data has 21 columns. So, but now we want to say, you know what, don't bring in all the 21 columns. Let's say we want to bring in just column one, two, and three alone, just for example. So what you need to do is right after this data that you have here, which is the 21 columns, I'm going to put uh, two square brackets, okay? So two square brackets is going to give me access to the fields that we have in that data. So the inside square bracket is where I will now start to list out the columns I want. So I want to pick column two, for example. Let's say column uh, one is useless. So column two, I'll come here, I'll put a comma, take another square bracket, column three, column three, then go outside of that square bracket, put another one, another square bracket, and put column four. And then let's just hit enter. So as you can see from this, this is going to save me a lot of, uh, it will save me an extra step of having to remove all the other columns from my, from my, uh, from my data. So I'm just bringing in what I need alone. Then I can now help myself to now do use first row as headers. I can also help myself to change the data types if they are not correct. So that is a way you can manage such things from your flat file. Of course, from relational databases, you can use SQL queries to select what you need. But with this one, we can manage with what we have uh, as far as Excel and other flat files is concerned. So basically, the bottom line is this. If you need to do any reporting in Power BI, just bring in only the columns you need. If you have any column you don't need, please just drop it already from the data source. You don't have to bring it in at all. Then you are going to save yourself a lot. For every column you drop that is useless, you are saving thousands of, or millions of rows, depending on how many rows of data you have. Say, for example, your data has one million rows. One column is going to impact heavily on that's your data model because one column is going to contain one million different items. So if you take it out, you can imagine how good your model is going to respond to that. So I'll just close this query and I'll go back to my slide now. Slide, slide. Okay, so first thing, bring in only relevant data fields. Then number two is you need to disable something called auto date and time intelligence in Power BI. So let me explain what that means. So if I come back to a separate Power BI now, which one is that? Uh, Superstore. Okay, so this Power BI file we were working with earlier, let me clear this guy, close performance analyzer. So this Power BI, basically, you will see that for every data model we have, in most cases, it is, it is expected that you are going to do a, a lot of reporting that are based on time right and if you have to write time intelligence formulas in power bi then you need to ensure that uh, you have a separate table that is dedicated for calendar dates but what most of us do is we remember that we need to create a separate table for calendar dates what we don't remember to do is to disable the one that power bi has built for us internally so if i come to my report view now on my orders table you see that I have two different date columns there. I have uh, an order date column and I have a ship date column. So if I come to this ship date column, for example, and I expand it down, 
you will see it has created something called date hierarchies for me. So date hierarchies is basically the internal calendar table that uh, Power BI has generated. If I have my own dedicated calendar table, do I still need to keep this one? Absolutely no, I don't need to keep this guy. As a matter of fact, if I share my, uh, let me share you my file size. Uh, okay. So if you can see, you will see that this uh, model that is currently open is 763 kilobytes at the moment. But then if I come back to file in Power BI and I go to option and settings, I'll go to options. Then let me just say for this file alone, so there, there are two different ways you can you can carry out settings in your Power BI file. There's a global setting which will always apply every time you open Power BI. And then there's a current file setting that is meant for the current Power BI file you are working with. So I'm going to come to data load. And uh, for a second, I'm going to check, uncheck this auto date time that is here. So if I uncheck this auto date time, and I click OK. You see that the ship date, where is my ship date? The ship date no longer has that uh, extra columns, that extra year, month, and day that we had before. It doesn't have it anymore. And if I save this file, for example, Control S, remember what that figure was before? It was uh, 763. Let's check if anything has happened. So if I come back to this place, you see that it has reduced from 763 KB to 754 KB. So I've been able to save, even though it is small, even though this file size itself is small, but in some cases that can go as high as some very high numbers, in terms, maybe uh, what's after kilobytes is megabytes. You can save a lot of megabytes depending on your file size. You probably will be able to save terabytes, depends. OK, so that's another way you can optimize your data model. Once you have your calendar table, please uncheck or disable the Power BI auto dates and time. So that's number two way that you can use to optimize your data model. Then number three is you need to make sure you reduce model cardinality. So what does this mean? If I come back to this, my report here, and let's say uh, I want to create a report for, let's say, OK, so what do I have? If I come back to my data view here and I come to orders table, I have things for customers, I have things for products, OK? So if I come to my report view now and say, I want to see. Sorry, I'm how for interrupting again. Please yeah. help us minimize the meeting window there. Just minimize. this one, right? Yeah, just minimize. OK, yeah, thank you. Cool. All right. So basically, I want to do a kind of report that will probably tell me how many uh, customers are purchasing. Maybe some products, for example, maybe how many customer segments are purchasing some products. So what I need to do is I need to count the number of customers I have. Then I'm going to report that on the product table. OK, so I will write another simple measure. So right click new measure. Let me call that number of customers. Number of customers. Customers and then I'll use a simple count function to count my customer name from my customer table. Just simple example. Click enter. OK, this one exists already, so let me just use two number of customers two. or oh, write it in full number of customers. So when I hit enter, I have my measure for number of customers and I will just change it on this report. So on this report, I will remove a segment from rows. I'm going to bring in something like from products. I want to see product. Uh, subcategory on rows then i don't want to report revenue i want to see how many customers are buying all of these things 
So what you see is, is returning the same value for everything. So why is it returning the same value? Is because, you know, anytime you see something like this in Power BI, your first thing, your, the first instinct of what you need to do is you must go to your model view and look at your relationships. So my measure is counting something on the customer's table, but then I want to report it by something on the product's table. So let's see if I go to my model view, you see that the way it is designed and the way it is arranged, customers is connected to my order table, which is where all the numbers are coming from, based on the customer ID column, which means that I can filter this my order table with anything from customer table. I can do that, works fine. And then if I look at my product table and I check what is the connection link, I will see that uh, from this product table, product key is used to connect to my order table, which means I can filter my order table based on anything on this product table. But then I can't filter anything on my customer table from my product table because they, they don't have any kind of connection. So the connection flows from up to down and it stops there. From up to down and it stops there. So if I want to be able to filter this customer table, for example, that means I need to enable, I need to come here and enable this. So I'm going to double click on that line. So just double clicking on this connection line and I need to change this cross filter direction to both, not single. So when I click OK, so what that now means is once, OK, so what that means is this now. So before, prior to now, customer's table could filter this my order table, but now I've enabled that to go both ways. So it now means that order table can also now filter customer's table. So if my product table is filtering my order table, because my order table can now filter the customer table back, then that means I now have a connection link that now flows from products to orders and it now flows back to customers. So if I go back to my report view now, you see that it now works fine, which is good. Most of us are going to stop here. But the truth about it is some of the things that increases, uh, that increases the the negativity of your report, so to say, in terms of performance, is when you have a lot of multiple cardinalities like this. So instead of doing something like this, it's better for you to use a measure to read this cardinality to, to, to kind of like force it to, to show what you want it to show. So I'm going to come back here and change this back to single. Okay. Then I'll go back to my report view. You see, it's back to normal. I just now need to change my measure to something else. So I'll come to this, my measure now, number of customers, and try to use a function that we all know is the most powerful function in the DAX language. And it is a function that you can use to change filters context. Okay, so what I want to do now is I'm going to bring in calculate just before this. So calculate this my number of customers i'll put a comma here and the kind of filtering i want is i want to be able to enable a cross filter so cross filter my left column let's say my left column is going to be my orders so orders uh customer id where are you customer id my right column let's say that should be customers, customer ID. So basically the link between the two tables, customers and others ID. Okay. Then the last argument is what's the cross filter type. I can see both. So I'm going to select both. So, and I close brackets twice and hit enter. Then you can see that I have, I have achieved the same result. So by so doing, I've been able to limit the number of cardinalities I have, and instead of having multiple cardinalities, I'm now using a measure instead to reap that uh, cross-filtering effect that I needed. Okay, so going back to my slide, so you can see that we have talked a lot on data models optimization because the bulk of what you need to optimize is your data model. So if you go back to your report that you have built in your organization, 
and you check and you see so many cross filtering just kind of like change everything using the cross filter function and calculate it's going to save you a lot because what really happens is every time you do something like that and you see that oh this is not filtering this you quickly go to your model view and you enable cross filtering direction to filter both ways don't do that use this approach that i have just explained so moving on to the next slide so another major factor is you need to optimize your dax codes in order for you to optimize the entire report and how you optimize your dax code is by uh, making sure that first of all you don't write complex dax how easy that is i don't know because most times the dax we write at first is just for it to work which is very good so write your dax first let it work no problem with that but when it comes to the time you now need to optimize, then you have to start thinking about how you can write those DAX codes differently. So different functions, for example, carry different, uh, let me just say different functions, uh, they have different prices, so to say, which means some functions are very expensive based on the way they populate your results. Some functions are not very expensive. So of course, when you want to start optimizing, then you have to think about alternative functions that are way cheaper, just like you would do if you have to go to the market, you are looking for cheaper options, the same way you do with DAX. So one of the things that you can use to actually uh, reduce the work that your DAX code is doing is to use variables. So the last time, I think uh, Wally talked a lot on how to use variables in DAX. So variables can save you a lot of work. So let me see if I can quickly uh, show you something that we explain this. So say for example now, I want to calculate, let's say, the year to date of my revenue. You know, I've written revenue here before somewhere. I think I wrote revenue somewhere. Now I want to calculate year to date. Typical thing we will do is go and create a new measure. So modeling new measure. And then we'll call this one, let's say revenue YTD. And we can use a function total YTD. And the first thing is asking for is an expression. It's, it needs a calculation. So because I want my revenue by Sorry, and I, had I can't see your screen. I hope I'm not okay. the only one. Yes, please. Oh, others, can I you guess, confirm? I can see the screen. Yes, you are the only I one. Can I can see the screen. <coughs> I can see the screen very well. OK, please okay. continue. All right, so because I've heard so many, I can see the screen. It's ringing in my head. I feel like just I should just continue saying I can see the screen. I've forgotten what I want to say. I just want to say I can see the screen. <laughs> I heard that so sorry. many times. <laughs> sorry. But good, yeah, good. Maybe. I'm happy. No, no, don't mind me. Don't mind me. Sorry. Just kidding. All right. So now, uh, total YTD needs an expression. My expression is basically a formula. Maybe I could come here and write something like uh, the sum of some, some, something, basically. But I want to leverage what I had before now. Right? Oh, maybe. Let me see. Total YTD. Okay, so let me use a different example. Let's see previous months. I think that will make more sense. So revenue previous months is going to be equals to uh, calculate. I had revenue before. Calculate revenue comma and the filter is going to be previous month. Previous month of my calendar date close close enter so revenue previous months and i will just try to create a report that can use this measure now so duplicate this one i duplicated that visual you know i like to do things i don't like to work hard so now i'm going to change what i have on rows i'll go to my calendar and i'll bring in my year, drop that year on rows. Then I'm going to drop the month just underneath it. And I want to maybe expand so I can see everything all at once. And uh, I don't want number of customers. I want revenue 
and then I want revenue previous month. So revenue and revenue previous month basically is now telling me that I can calculate something for variance. So I can do a variance simply by subtracting my revenue from my previous month revenue. So define a new measure. I'll call this one revenue variance. And I'm going to have to use a function called divide. So divide, my numerator is going to be the subtraction of revenue, maybe revenue previous month, or which one first, which one goes first? Revenue minus revenue previous month. That's my numerator. Then my denominator is my revenue previous month. Okay, so and the alternate result I could say zero. If you don't find it, just give me a zero. And I'll hit enter. So what you don't uh, what you need to understand with this now is if you look at this code, you will see that revenue alone. So let's say revenue previous month alone is appearing two times. And the truth of the matter is, each time this revenue previous month appears, Power BI is doing a different calculation. So it's calculating revenue previous month twice. This is going to have an impact on our report efficiency. So what we need to do instead is basically to put our revenue previous month in a variable. So when you put something in a variable like that, it means it's going to calculate only once, not twice. Okay. Of course, it has its own pros and cons as well. But since we are talking optimization now, so let's use the pros aspect of variables. So instead of having something like this, then I should probably do something like uh, variable. So var. And I give my var a name. So I call it rev pm equals to calculate revenue, comma previous month calendar dates yeah. and i'm going to use this one now to return is my division so return divide revenue minus so instead of using this one that's going to calculate multiple times i will just use a variable that calculates only once it is ref pm and this also as ref pm. Uh, where is it? Ref pm. So this is a lot better than running your calculation multiple times. So there are different ways you can still use variables to save your life, to save our lives. We can use variables to save our lives when it comes to optimizing our tax codes. So that's takes me to the next thing. So another thing is, so how much time do we have left? Sorry. Mr. Adeji, are you there? Yes, I can hear you. OK, so how much time do you have left, please? So let me know. Uh, we have about 10 more minutes, less okay. than 10 minutes, because I'm very sure we have questions that will come up. OK, so less okay. Than six minutes, other time for questioning. OK, so let me think about another example I can use for this second thing. So the second thing you may use that you can use, which is very popular. So basically, I'm picking popular things that we always uh, take for granted is do you really need to reference full table in your measure? So what I mean by that is let's say I want to do a calculation now. Let's let me think about what I should calculate first. So uh, if I want to calculate Maybe when I start, it's going to come. So uh, modeling new measure. So let's say I want to calculate something that will do that has to do with, uh, let's say, revenue, just something stupid, basically. So revenue for December, December 20. 15, for example, okay. So, revenue for December 2015 means I need to do to 
change whatever filter context I'm having in whatever my report. I need to bring in calculate. So I want to say calculate my revenue, comma. Then this is the important aspect of it. So how do I want my filter? Because I want to filter this revenue to show only for December 2015. So I need to bring in uh, the filter function. So filter, right? And my table has to be something like filter all of my calendar. So because this all noun is asking for table name or column name. So most of us just leave it as, as called as table names. OK, so filter all of my calendar, right? And then comma. So my filter expression now. So I'm filtering the calendar table now. I want to filter it to where my calendar year equals to 2015 and uh, my calendar month equals to December. Sorry, no time to format this code. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to do now. So calculate my revenue, but I want you to filter is to where all, show me all the dates that has to do with year 2015 and December, December and year 2015, basically. So this is a correct DAX measure. It's going to work if I put that, let's say, on a card visual. So revenue for this, blank, why is it blank? Come back to my calendar. Yeah. Okay, so I have I don't have December there. What I have is DEC. So DEC. So this is it, 74.92. All right, so the reason why I'm bringing it all here is because from whatever uh, report I'm trying to create now, I don't want the values to change based on the month selected. So let me just try and add that to this my reports here. So December 2015, the blank. Okay, so you can see that it's returning the same values for everything December 2015, which is my objective, right? So maybe I want to compare the revenue for each month against December 2015. Perhaps something happened in that December, and I just want to, to see how it relates with all the other months. So this DAX code is correct, it's working fine, but the problem is this. Immediately I tell all here to carry the whole calendar table, what I'm saying is, if my calendar table has 15 columns, maybe I have a weekday, I have week number, I have this, I have that, plenty of things, I've broken down my calendar into different categories, it now has like 15 columns. So what I'm telling DAX to do now is, I'm asking DAX to scan through all those 15 columns. Meanwhile, all I need from that table is just the year and the month number. So instead of specifying the whole calendar table, what I should have done is to go for the month. So calendar year, filter the calendar year, comma, filter the calendar month. This is all I need. So this is all I need. Instead of supplying the whole 15 columns. Okay, so why is it slow now? All right, so instead of supplying the whole 15 columns, all I need to do is just limit it to what I need to do. So filter all the calendar year and all the calendar months. And by so doing, I'm going to reduce a lot of work from my DAX code. Now, it depends on how I want to do my reporting, really, because uh, eventually, if what I need to do is to show it for everything that I need, I guess I need to keep the whole calendar. But really, what I'm trying to say is, do you need, do you really need to reference the full table? So if your reporting does not require that you should reference the full table, then just reference the columns you need alone. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the next item on my slides. So thank God the time is not within waste so much time because I'm just going to talk through this. So when it comes to, uh, so this is supposed to be, 
for you to avoid having multiple visuals in the report page. So if you have so many visuals in one report page, then be sure that that page is going to load slower. So as much as possible, you want to limit the number of reports you have per page. So if possible, you basically maybe want to split your report into different pages and you want it to look like a book or maybe you want to use something like a drill through filter so that if somebody needs to see more details, they can just right click somewhere and drill through to a new page or you want to use a you want to use bookmarks to navigate people from one page to the other. So instead of having so many things on one visual, it's going to, to reduce the speed of that your report page, have a little number of visuals. So typically, I always like to do four visuals for myself, but clients always want different things. Then the second thing is you need to limit the number of card visuals that you have. So the more cards visuals you have on your report page, the slower your report is going to be. But guess what? We all love to have cards. And we all have plenty cards on our report page. So if there are alternatives that you can use, multi-row cards, or if you can design uh, a table instead of having cards and make the table look very fine, then it's better for you to have uh, to have multiple cards because it's going to slow down your report. And then the final thing here is also that you must limit the number of custom visuals you have in your reports if you want to optimize your report performance. The more custom visuals you have the slower your report is going to be. Custom visuals, basically, they render slower than the standard visuals. So I hope I've been able to uh, tell you a couple of things that you can do so that when you go back to your report in Power BI, you can take a second look at things and you will be able to uh, optimize your report, starting, of course, from measuring your performance first. So you want to measure the performance, you want to take your report from uh, snail movements, you want to take it to cheetah speed and uh, you want to measure your performance. First of all, then you want to check whether all the columns that you have brought in are actually relevant in your report. Once it's not relevant, take it out. You want to disable auto date and time intelligence. You want to check your data model view for cross filtering direction so that you can use DAX measures instead to activate cross filters. Then you want to check all your DAX codes, most especially where you can replace codes with variables. And you also want to check where you have used the all function. And your all function is basically looking at the full table when what you actually need it to do is maybe to look at just some columns. And then you want to check how many visuals you have per page. Is there a way you can split one page into two pages, which will enhance your performance? Or do you have so many cards? Is there something you can do about it? Maybe you want to use other kind of card visualizations that can uh, take more items and you can structure it to look just like your card visuals. And you want to avoid using many custom visuals. We like custom visuals because they always look fine and they always do interesting things, but you should only use them when you need to, okay? So if a standard visual can achieve something, please use a standard visual. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. I appreciate. So please, I'm very sure we have questions that will come up. This is just a minute to the end of the session. Please, if you have any okay. question for our speaker, please quickly, you can type the question or you just raise your hand so that we can have your questions. So as we are trying to do that, so on our meeting chat, you will see our feedback form, please. The feedback form for this section is very, very important. So please, I will encourage us to help us fill that feedback form so that we can get to know what to do and how to do it better. Apart from the feedback form, we will need you to check out some of our old videos. This is episode eight, from episode one to Eight. The eighth version, that's today's version, will be loaded before midnight. So tomorrow it will be available on that same channel. And for those who are interested in the basic section, we are the 10 days Power BI made easy. So go, go and check our meeting chat. You will see the link there. So, and apart from that, I have one more link. I have four links there. The fourth one is a link to join the community. We have 
Microsoft, we have a Microsoft Kaizala community for Power BI that we've been running for a while. So please, if you want to join this community, feel free, click on the link and join our community. So thank you very much. So thank you very much, Mr. Ahmed. Oh, you know, we really appreciate you. This is a session well delivered and I'm still waiting, okay? I, thank you, boss. So thank you, Toby, for thanking our speaker. So another, somebody there said, awesome, bro, good job. So good job, thank you very much. We appreciate your comments. We we'll love it if you can help us fill our feedback form. So next week, we'll be looking at a wonderful section next week. And that session is talking more about Power Apps. No, no, no. Microsoft Power BI Apps. And also, we'll be looking at the virtual, the web services. That's the working with Power BI Apps and web services. Another MC will be coming on board to share that section with us. His name is Paul Barnabas. I will want you to join us same time, the same channel next week, so that we can really we flow on with this. On our feedback form, there is a part there for you to submit any question you want us to take serious, any module or any gray area around Power BI. Feel free to drop it there. I want to tell you the MCT community in Nigeria. We are doing great. We have talented people, gifted hands that we do justice to any topic of your choice. Please feel free, even in the community, drop the topic you want us to treat. This is a weekly event, every week, one hour, to trash what you think is important to help us as a community. Thank you very much. I appreciate you all. So till we meet next week, Saturday, do have a nice time. We appreciate you. Goodbye. <laughs>